we start a niche uh, e-commerce income stream, building that income stream by researching products. And what you want to look for here is to find something that is unique, something that, that solves a problem and something that you know is really has that clear point of difference in the marketplace. You're listening to The Growth Booth, the show focused on achieving lifestyle freedom through online businesses. Whether you're looking for step-by-step strategies to start building an online business, simple game plans to grow your business, or proven lifestyle freedom frameworks, you are in the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join the thousands of listeners already in growth mode. Aiden Booth here, welcome to this episode where today we are talking about e-commerce and how you can make e-commerce really turn 2022 into your best uh, year yet. Now in e-commerce there are a couple of common approaches, a couple of ways to uh, attack e-commerce and we're going to talk about those in this uh, episode here and towards the end of the episode I'll give you my thoughts on what I think is the easier uh, approach and the best approach for most people but I'll give you some more context around that as well because it is different for everyone. So what are the different models that I'm talking about when it comes to e-commerce? Well I, I like to call them the niche approach and the generalist approach. The niche approach is where you build out a store and it's specific to a, to a specific niche. So when I was getting started out with e-commerce stores of my own um, over a decade ago, I, I had one e-commerce store which was a niche store which sold uh, barber chairs. These are the big, heavy, uh, monst- you know, monstrous <laughs> chairs that I would sell to barbers, and they're expensive, they're heavy, so they might not fit the criteria for the perfect e-commerce product. But I did pretty well with them because I could make a lot of money uh, on each item that was sold. So that's an example of a niche store. Another example uh, of a niche store is one that we have around train horns, where um, we would you would go into the store and all it sells are train horns. If you don't know what train horns are, these are these uh, obnoxious horns that you can uh, add on to your car. And I don't know why people would want them, but they, they make one hell of a noise and uh, you can drive down the street and scare people with them. So uh, anyway, we did pretty well out of that niche store. But two examples of different niche stores, that's niche e-commerce. Now, the generalist approach is to build a store that sells any number of different items. You could have 100 different uh, niches in that that one store. Uh, And that's the second approach. Now, uh, we've made millions of dollars from both uh, approaches to e-commerce. In the niche approach, currently we've got three different uh, niches that we really focus on. And we do millions of dollars every single year from those. We're, we're featured, we've got our products featured in tens of thousands of stores all over the United States. Uh, we've built a pretty big business around niche stores. And when I say niche store, it's not so much a store where you're selling all of your items through one store. It's just that website, that store, maybe sort of the, the hub of your operations. So that's not to say that you wouldn't be selling your items in lots of different places. You could be selling them on Amazon, on Walmart, um, or that you know, offline, online, or all over the place, as well as on your store. So when I say niche store, I'm not specifically talking about just selling in that one place. So we've done really well with uh, niche um, style e-commerce, and I'll, I'll talk about the approach that we go through to to get started in that in just a moment. And we've also done really well with the general store approach. And if you're familiar with some of the projects that um, both me and my business partner, Steve Clayton, do online, uh, then you've probably heard about the Kibo Code, which is a training program where we have taken people through and really taught them how to build these generalist uh, e-commerce stores that could have hundreds of different products from hundreds of different niches Um, and do very well from them, essentially. So two very different approaches. Both work uh, really, really well. And what I'd like to do now is just dive down a little bit more into each one of these and give you a bit of a framework for how I think you could approach them in 2022 and absolutely stack the odds of success uh, in your favor. So we'll talk about the generalist or the general kind of e-commerce store approach first. So this is really a numbers game. You want to have a high number of products published on your store, um, and this means a high number of products tested uh, as well. And there are lots of different ways that you can do this. You can do this with 
when I uh, you can do testing with um, you know paid ads from the likes of Google and Microsoft, you can do testing by putting products in free marketplaces like Facebook. Um, Facebook Marketplace, you can sell uh, you know, brand new products in those marketplaces. And ultimately what you want to do is find winners. So your funnel, if you like, is the products that you're putting onto your website. The more products you put on your website, the more tests you run, the more winners you're going to find. And each winner is hopefully going to make you a lot of money. It varies, but a winner could make you you know, $100, $200 a day or $1,000, $2,000 a day, just depending on what that product is. So the way that you make more money is by scaling and you do that by continually testing uh, more products in a range of diff- different niches. And you may end up um, sort of focusing on one uh, sort of broader niche as, as an example. So you might find that you start selling um, some piece of outdoor furniture and that's going really well for you. And then you might test other uh, related items. And so you can sort of by default work your way into being more of a niche seller without deliberately intending uh, on doing that. So let's say you take this approach. You find uh, maybe one or two products that that become winners and they start to make you a lot of money. How how do you go about scaling? Scaling is always a function of, well, there's only a couple of levers when it comes to scale, but scaling is a function of either getting more traffic or more conversions. And you can do other things like optimizations and reduce costs and stuff as well. But for the most part, you want to be looking at how can you get more traffic or more conversions. So in the world of a general store, one way that you can do this, one way that you can get more traffic is by looking at marketplace expansion. So there are different marketplaces that we use I'll give you a few examples. There, there are the shopping platforms, Google Shopping, uh, Microsoft Shopping, and these are these product ads that you see when you do a search for an item inside of Google. Like if you go to Google and you type in uh, iPhone case as an example, you'll probably find at the top of Google images and prices related to different whole bunch of different iPhone cases. Now that's what I refer to as Google Shopping. Microsoft does the same thing. So Microsoft ads are going to appear on Bing uh, and other places as as well. So these are what we call the, the shopping platform ads. If you're just selling on Google, you could expand to selling on Microsoft and you're not going to double your traffic by doing that, but you could get another 30% traffic. So, you know, you've expanded your traffic. You could also expand to other marketplaces like the Facebook marketplace. That's another sales channel, uh, Pinterest, uh, eBay, Walmart, um, and, and so on and so on. There are lots of different channels out there um, these days and, and there are more and more that are sort of coming online Um, all the time. So that's one way that you can get more traffic is by getting your your products in more marketplaces. So you still only have one generalist website but or store, I should say, but that store can sort of seamlessly integrate with lots of different platforms. So you could have your products being sold on all kinds of different platforms. The orders may or may not still be processed through your store, but you're getting more traffic because you're, you're out there uh, in more places, essentially. Another way that you can do this, approach this, is to, to find more winning products. So more winning products will essentially mean more uh, traffic that converts into sales. So I've spoken about getting more traffic by going out to more marketplaces. Well, the other way is getting more traffic by having more products. If you've got 50 products um, in your store and you ramped that up and got 100 products in your store and you were you know, continuing to run the same kind of ads or if you weren't running ads, you know, the same kind of marketing that actually brings that traffic in, then you could expect to get double the traffic because you've gone from 50 products to 100 products. And if you've gone from 50 products to 100 products, then hopefully the, the number of winners that you've got would have doubled as well. So you're getting more of this converting traffic. And so the way that you, you find more, more winning products is by doing more testing and so on. Another thing that you can do is look for higher conversions. So conversions or conversion optimization, that's another lever that you've got at your, your disposal. So one of them is traffic. We've spoken a bit about how you can get more traffic through going into different marketplaces or by getting more products out there. 
conversions, you can do a better job of conversions by split testing. And there are lots of tools and software uh, that's out there these days. Google uh, has got some free split testing software. Visual Website Optimizer is one that uh, we've used a lot um, over the years. That's vwo.com and you can get into some really interesting split testing. And if you take a product and are able to increase the conversions by, by 20%, that's huge. That's like increasing the revenue by 20%. So it's oftentimes easier to actually um, improve your bottom line by boosting the, the conversions. And the thing that I like about when you boost conversions is you get more sales, but you're not necessarily paying more to get those sales. This is assuming that you're using uh, paid advertising. So um, you are really optimizing your, your store at that point. You're optimizing your sales you're getting sales for lower cost. The other thing that you can do is look at uh, lower cost traffic or trying to optimize any ads that you may be running so that they cost you less. And obviously that's gonna give you a uh, better bottom line. So that's a sort of an overview of how to approach the generalist store or selling in a wide range of different uh, niches. And I really like it because you're not limited to selling just one type of product in one specific industry or one specific niche. You're very, very agile and it's something where you don't have to worry so much about branding or positioning your products. You're like a, a mega store, an online version of a mega store. In fact, that's how this whole model sort of came about um, in our business as we saw this amazing uh, model that was used in Japan, Don Quixote. Uh, stores in Japan and these stores sell everything under the sun and they've done incredibly well. So that's kind of what we wanted to replicate in the online space and that's how we do this, these generic stores. And as I mentioned, I think at the beginning we do have training around how to do this as part of our Kibo Code program, which is not very often uh, available to the public, but um, we have done a few openings over the past a uh, few years. So you can find out if that's open or, or when that might be open uh, or get on a waiting list at thekibocode.com. Now, the other type of approach to e-commerce is a niche approach. Now, a niche approach is, as I said at the beginning, it's where you specialize in one specific niche. And for a long period of time, this was my preferred approach to, to e-commerce because I guess I just understood it a bit more and it sort of made sense to me. I'm not saying that it's the best approach necessarily. I'll give you some thoughts around that in just a moment, but um, it was something that I could easily get my head around and was how I started out online and my business partner, Steve Clayton, he started out uh, with niche e-commerce as well. So it's still a numbers game, but the approach is different. With niche e-commerce, we find it easier to start by thinking about leveraging an existing marketplace where there's an existing ecosystem of traffic and buyers. So a couple of the best examples of these right now are Amazon uh, and Walmart. And this is, you, you don't even have to have your own store to begin with. I think it's always good to have your own um, website to, if, if you're going down that niche path because it allows you to show more credibility and some people will um, inevitably go to your niche store anyway. So you may as well have products here that people can buy, but you don't actually need that to start with. You can just get started by selling as a third party seller on the likes of Amazon, uh, Walmart and, and other uh, similar marketplaces. So we start a niche uh, e-commerce income stream, building that income stream by researching products. And what you want to look for here is to find something that is unique, something that, that solves a problem and something that you know is really has that clear point of difference in the marketplace. And this is one thing that's getting a little bit harder to do because there are so many people selling so many different products uh, these days that um, a lot of people think that you know all the good ideas are taken. Obviously, there's always something that you can do. But when I'm thinking about how to approach uh, a new product for one of my brands or a new brand entirely, first I want to think about what problems can I solve that are out there. Uh, and that's something that I spend quite a bit of time diving into. And what I'll then do is come up with a short list of products. And not, not, not so much a short list, but a list. And that list of products may have 30, 40, 50 different products on it. And 
these are products that will be selling at the moment and I'll be able to go to Amazon.com, I'll be able to use different tools to analyze how many products are being sold on a daily basis on Amazon and I'll be able to use that to make some good estimates about what I would be able to do if I were to launch a product in the same place because I can see what the search volume is. I can see how many sales my, my potential competitors are making and I can use that to make an informed decision about whether or not that particular product and that particular niche is something that I want to get into. So if I started out with a list of 30 or 40 products, by the time I go down and, and figure out the demand, uh, how many potential sales I could get, the competitiveness, uh, the profitability uh, and so on of each product, I'm probably going to come up with a short list of five products. You know, you can, we, the, the approach that we use is to sort of whittle it down from a large number to a group of maybe four or five products that we want to get some quotes for and get some samples for. And that would be the next thing that we do. We would look for suppliers. We would ask them, you know, what's your manufacturing pro- price for, you know, 500 of these products? Uh, and what's your lead time and that's how, how long it's going to take them to uh, finish manufacturing them uh, and so on and so forth. And we would also get samples. So we would get samples sent to us that we can touch, we can you know, have a look at, we can uh, play around with, we can use to come up with other ideas. And then eventually we would go back to the supplier and say, okay, this is the one that we want to go with or maybe there's two that we want to go with. Now, one of the downsides, I guess, of if you're creating your own brand of products is you do need to buy a whole bunch of products up front. And this is not something that we do with the generalist approach. With the generalist approach, it's drop shipping. So you're using existing products, other people's products, and you're only ever buying that product after you've sold it. Someone comes in, um, you get that traffic, you get some orders. Then once you get those orders, you're then able to uh, buy the product and send it off to the end customer. If you're building your own brand, then you will need to buy products up front. It might be 100, it might be 1,000. It depends on what it is. Different uh, niches, different industries, different uh, manufacturers, they've got different minimum order quantity. So this is one of the things that you have to take into consideration when you're launching your own brand. And it's one of the the roadblocks for some people because some people are not willing to put $1,000 or $2,000 or $500, whatever it might be, down to do a production run of whatever product it is that they are wanting to sell. And of course, at this point, although you can stack the odds of success in your favor, there's no 100% guarantee that you are going to succeed with that. Um, There's no 100% guarantee that the market is gonna like it. You do get better at that, and I think you really can eliminate a lot of the risk, especially when you look at how you're gonna price that product, because if you feel like, you know, if you can buy a product for $10 and if you feel like you can sell it for $40, you've probably got a lot of wiggle room there. So if in the worst case scenario, that product is not selling uh, like hotcakes when you launch it on, on Amazon.com, then you can do a massive price reduction, sell it at $20 instead of $40, you'll probably break even, uh, but you'll be able to sell the product. So um, I don't think it's high risk, it's just different to the generalist uh, dropship approach. So what we would typically do is we would finally get to a point where we've had back and forth negotiation, we've touched a product, we've felt a product from um, the sample that we've received and we would place an order. In our case, after we place an order, we've got an office and a warehouse in Guangzhou, China, where we've got our team there and our team will inspect the product. And there are third party services that you can use to do this. And it's not essential. Some people don't do it. I just think it's a best practice to inspect the product to make sure that you're only sending, uh, you know, 100% um, good products from China where they're normally manufactured to uh, the warehouse. And for example, amazon.com. Uh, where you're ultimately going to be um, selling the product. So you'll do an inspection of some kind or maybe you'll just skip that um, step and you'll get it into Amazon and you'll you'll hopefully start selling. So the way that we start selling on Amazon for the most part is we would turn on paid ads and that will help generate some momentum. So you'll then get people 
coming and buying through paid ads, but also just organically searching for something. So if you were selling like an iPhone case, some people will be typing in iPhone case and finding you through the ads, but some people will also be typing in iPhone case and finding you through the organic listings and you'll start to get rankings, you'll start to get more traffic and you'll start to make uh, more sales. So then the question of, well, how do you scale um, that particular um, type of, of e-commerce business? It's the same way that we would scale any online business for the most part. Um, it's more traffic and, and better conversions. So how do you get more traffic? Well, um, you could start selling your products in more marketplaces. So Amazon.com is just one. You could sell it on Amazon.co.uk. You could sell it in all the Amazon um, stores in, across Europe and just that alone without developing any new products would probably boost your bottom line by about 30%. You could sell in other marketplaces that are not Amazon, so you know Walmart and you could have a look at all, all of these other marketplaces. You could sell on your own store, so um, you know um, you, you could build out that brand, sell on your own store, start using paid ads or uh, organic optimization to get some free traffic coming into your own uh, website so you could take sales that way uh, and you could launch more products. So by virtue of launching a new product, you would expect to get more traffic uh, and be able to make more sales. The other thing that I love about the niche store or the branded approach to e-commerce is that you can also start selling offline. So uh, I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, our um, niche products, our brands that we've developed are sold in over 10,000 stores across the United States, as well as uh, online. I think offline probably represents as much in terms of revenue as, as online potentially now. Um, so that's something that you can do when you've got your own branded products. So which should you focus on? Which is best for you? It, it really depends on your objectives. Are you looking for fast cash? Have you got a passion or this um, long-term idea? That, you know, Maybe you've always wanted to build a brand. Do you have a specific hobby? Like maybe you're uh, maybe you're really really good at swimming, and you've got some ideas about swimming products that you would like to to bring out under your own name or an own brand that you've got. That might sway your decision one way or another. In terms of what's easier, I think undoubtedly the approach that we use, the generalist or the general store approach, is, is easier. Uh, because you're not locked in. You're very, very agile. You're not paying for inventory up front and you've got a lot of flexibility there. The downside is that it may take longer to build a multi-million dollar brand if that's something that you want to do. But who's to say that's the best thing to do anyway? You could still build out a store that sells all kinds of products that makes multiple millions of dollars in a year. And if you wanted to sell that, then you'd have a real asset there that you could sell. So there are pros and cons to both. Um, I think that ideally you would have uh, one foot in each side of e-commerce. But if I was starting from scratch, I think I'll take the generalist approach in 2022. And this may change. You know, a few years ago, it was probably easier to take the niche approach because there was so much of this uh, low hanging fruit, this opportunity that existed on the likes of Amazon.com. But that is a little bit more competitive now. And I think that the generic approach is much, much more developed. Supply chains are more developed, uh, meaning you can take your pick from tens of thousands of different products that are already in the United States. You don't have to worry about importing, branding, um, or, or any of that stuff. You can cut all of that out and go direct to quickly get these products up online, uh, get traffic to them, start selling and scale. So I think for most people, the general approach is probably better. And as I mentioned, uh, you can find out uh, about where to find more training about this at thekibocode.com. And you can also check out the Blueprint Academy. Blueprint Academy is a mastermind group that we've been running for a long period of time now. I think this is our eighth or ninth year that we've been doing it. Uh, and this is where we provide uh, more coaching and training, access to our infrastructure as well. So access to um, being able to use our office uh, and our warehouse in China to inspect products, being able to use our team uh, in uh, China to be able to negotiate product uh, prices and 
and shipments and, and so on and so forth. So if you've got access to all of that infrastructure, then maybe things are a little bit different. Maybe I would say, look, okay, you know, there's a case to be made for taking the niche approach, but the reality is most people don't have access to that. And without that, I think the, the generic approach is absolutely uh, the way to go. So look, I hope you found this useful and I will have more episodes in the very near future uh, about e-commerce and particularly about the anatomy of an e-commerce store that converts like gangbusters. So uh, watch out for an update about that very soon. Thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next episode. 